All right, guys. That's what we got going on. Zero zone, three door freezer, not freezing. It's at one degree now. The complaint is that it will freeze some days, and some days it'll get up around 50 or 60. First thing I do is check my airflow. Now the airflow seems to be fine right now. If you'll notice this ice right here, I have a couple of videos where I highlight this particular problem. There's a drain further down there. Check all those other fans. There's a drain behind that, that middle fan. And that drain likes to freeze over because they don't have a factory installed drain line heater. So that drain will freeze over. The condensate will build up on the bottom of here. It will freeze and then eventually it'll stop the fans. So what probably happened is our ice built up, stopped our fans. The box warmed up, everything melted, and it came back down to temperature. That's why it's at one degree today. Looks like we have an inconsistent frost pattern as well. All right, so what you're looking at is the condensing unit of the freezer we're working on. Just gonna tip this up real quick. It's a little dirty. Side glass is clear. Condensing fan motors. Doing a pretty good job. Everything's dusty though. I'd really like to take some nitrogen and just blow this thing completely out. Rotolock looks rusty. Not a big fan of those Rotolock connections. Let's see. Oh. Oh. Well, that balloon shouldn't be there. Hmm. Yeah, that's a common issue at this location. This right here, that is our low side suction pressure. Goes right into that transducer right there. All right, so look right down there. This is our condensate pump. Pumps the water through this little hose up to a secondary pan on top of the cooler, on top of the freezer. It's got a heater in there. So all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna dump some water in here just to, just to make sure that that pump actually works. See right here, this is the drain line that goes, I don't know, about another 10 inches back. And then there's an elbow that goes up into the cabinet. And that's the part that freezes over. Probably hard to see in there, but it does appear that that pump is pumping water up to the secondary drain pan, secondary condensate pan. You see that round silver thing in the back? That's our float, and there's our heating element. So once it fills up, that heating element obviously is activated and heats up the water until it evaporates. But Looks like this pump is struggling to move that water, so. And it's a it's a common issue. They just sit in here and dry rot, seals inside of them dry rot, and they start pumping water out the sides and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that pump as well. Alright guys, I'm sure you're wondering what I'm doing. I'm soaking this towel in water. 
and in a few minutes I'm going to show you why. There is the black towel that I soaked in water. I have it draped over the back of this condensing coil because what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow compressed nitrogen through this condensing coil to get the dust out. And that towel is going to help me contain this dusty mess just a little bit. First, I'm going to turn the unit back on so the condensing fan comes on and sort of helps me guide my dust through the, through the doghouse here, the condensing cover, if you will. doesn't contain all the mess, but it helps. Hold your breath for this one. All right, condensing coil is clean. We will be submitting a quote to install a drain line heater and installing a new pump for that condensate pump down at the bottom of the unit. And then we will be able to verify proper operation after that. All right. So I'll be talking to you guys when we return. All right, guys. It's been about a week since that last clip you watched. We are back on site with a new heater and a new uh, condensate drain pan we can install in this unit so first thing I'm going to do is remove all the shelving right down here so I can flip this evaporator cover forward and we can get access to our drain real quick guys just something to keep in mind if you ever have to do this a lot of times these freezers are set next to another freezer and they'll just have a thin piece of plastic separating them so even though I shut this freezer off, this other freezer got cold enough to sort of keep some of this ice. Some of this ice down here that I wanted to melt didn't fully melt because all we have is this little plastic partition. So before I can do anything, I got to clear out all this ice. So got my little pump sprayer full of hot water. So let's get started tech tip of the day. Whenever you find yourself having to thaw one of these, in my situation, I left it off so it would thaw naturally. However, that right side next to our other freezer over there didn't completely thaw. So I got a bunch of water on the floor now because I wasn't careful enough and uh, didn't watch, didn't watch what was happening. So what you can do in this situation, because this drain pan, this condensate pump, has its own separate cord. So what I should have done when I got here is open up this bottom panel, swapped out this pan real quick because I'm changing it anyway. I can take this, plug it into my extension cord over there, and then this way this pump will continue to pump water up top to my secondary heated drain pan. Now of course the heater won't come on because the unit is completely off, but it would have prevented all this water from spilling out all over the floor. So, at the very least, make sure you got your wet floor signs out. All right, so let's get back to melting all that ice out of there. Just gotta go slow and steady because you don't really wanna start jabbing that block of ice with a screwdriver because it's sort of all over our evaporator inlet and our, uh, our TXV a little bit there, so I'm not just gonna go stabbing it with a screwdriver. What I am gonna do, though, 
you jam a rag in that drain so a majority of the water will build up in the bottom of this. And it might help melt the ice a little bit. But at the very least, it's going to keep a majority of the water down in the base of this and I can just suck it out with my shot back instead of mopping it up off the floor. All right, well, let me get back to this, guys. I'll bring it back when something exciting happens. All right. Well, let's get this heater installed. Let's see. Should be 120 volt steel braided heater. I know it's a zero zone, but zero zone doesn't actually make a drain line heater, so I just buy a generic drain line heater that we use on all of our true coolers. Works exactly the same as every other steel braided drain line heater you've ever seen. All right. Now, this blue line here, this blue line has constant power whenever the unit is on. Well, I take that back. It has constant power whenever the control is calling for fans, which is just about all the time, except in defrost. I want this drain line heater on all the time, so I am going to wire it directly into this power line. Now, if you want to go through the effort, you can run this drain line heater over to the control, and you can wire it directly to the control or to a junction block. But this is much easier. Now, I plan on using wire nuts because these heaters don't last forever. And I just want a somewhat easy way to replace it when it fails again. Because I could use butt connectors with heat shrink. But then I would come back, I'd have to cut all my wires again. And I don't want to do that.
All right, so our heater is wired in, what do you call it, series? Alright guys, so we got our heater wired in series. Anytime you do this, make sure you secure the wiring because obviously our fan blade right here, uh, it'll catch that and uh, it'll chop it up. So everything's nice and tight, nice and secure. We can flop that back, and make sure that it's not, um, make sure the wiring's not pushing into our fan blades. Now, all we gotta do is put our air baffles back over this evaporator and turn it back on. All right, guys, we're down to zero degrees. It took about 45 minutes to get there, but everything looks good. Airflow's returned. So, with that being said, I'm gonna get out of here, guys. Hey, guys. Real quick, I just wanted to take a few minutes and recap that video. I really wanted to highlight the uh, issue I ran into when I was trying to thaw out the rest of that ice that was in there. Now, some of those coolers in a few different uh, locations will have floor drains. And instead of being piped into a condensate drain pan like you've seen on that setup that I had, they'll just have just a regular PVC drain going right into a floor drain which obviously is ideal and is, you know, it'd be a lot easier to thaw those coolers out if they had that sort of setup. However, obviously this customer does not have that sort of setup probably because the initial installation of a floor drain was too much so they just went with the optional condensate drain pans and the heater and that entire thing. So anyway, when you have a setup like that, you can do one of two things that I found helpful is um, after the fact anyway in the video you'll notice that I did block that drain off with a rag and then I started melting all that ice you can do that and that'll work pretty well block that drain off melt as much ice as you can take your shot back suck it out every once in a while um, that works pretty well I mean the other thing you can do is you could uh, like I talked about in the video you could just run an extension cord to that drain pan assembly and that pump um, and that pump will run by itself at that point but the problem you have to watch out for is if you do it that way that water is going to get pumped up to that secondary drain pan up on top the uh, the pan with the heater in it and you could inevitably end up overflowing 
that drain pan and you don't want that because then you just got water all over the top of the unit running down the sides down the back down the front so you don't want that so i usually when i remember i usually opt out and go with the uh, the rag down the drain and then suck it out with the shop back other than that guys i just want to say thanks for watching out there i really do appreciate all the comments you guys have been giving me all the feedback um i mean i can't i can't even tell you how much stuff i've learned just from the comments alone because i tell you there are a lot of smart people watching these videos and there's a lot of smart people giving me feedback and i really do appreciate it so keep it coming guys if ever you notice anything that um, maybe i can improve on something i might have missed something you've done before and maybe got some tips on how to do it better feel free let me know shoot me an email um you know leave a comment if you want whatever you feel like doing i appreciate it all right so go ahead and like and subscribe for me all right guys we'll see you on the next one